somewhere in your body you've got a gene Actually, trillions of copies of a gene Every cell has a copy, it's known as NPC1 And it makes a protein, to be specific, a 13 Transmembrane, endosomal cholesterol binding protein And if you're asking how I know this is happening Know this protein is involved in lipid trafficking in your body As part of the bricks and mortar If it isn't, you have a lysosomal storage disorder called Neiman Pixie And you need help then, it makes you one in a hundred and fifty thousand In Neiman Pixie, that gene is disabled, the protein is deficient and can't deliver its payload Cholesterol builds up like styrofoam in a landfill Clogging up the lysosome, too many sphingolipids in the endocytic zone Cells die, but Purkinje neurons die the most So it's known as childhood Alzheimer's Neurodegeneration isn't just for old timers Kids born with Neiman Pixie decline cognitively and never live through their teens So the race is on to find a treatment Step one, trace the gene sequence Look into the genome, it's a window Compare species to get the info Some people tell me that it's sinful I just wanna help my friends though Patients waiting for some care Peer into the darkness, never run scared Answers come, but it's some here, some there in your body every cell's got a gene and pc1 it makes a protein and you can't be healthy unless it's intact and that same gene has been identified in cats and in cats it makes a fat transporter so you can give a cat a lipid storage disorder some would say that isn't nice those are kitty cat lives but if your kid is affected then the kitty cat dies it gets spliced for scientific insights but wait that same gene has been located in mice and for some reason a hundred dead mice just doesn't seem as bad there's a hundred dead cats, and why is that? Why are dead kitties nastier? Ever seen a knockout mouse with ataxia? It's sad. I can't imagine something awful, but luckily the same gene is also in Drosophila. What a relief when a fruit fly dies, nobody cries. The room is full of dry eyes, but if you still feel for the flies, hella sensitive, that's fine. The gene is also in C. elegans worms, baker's yeast, and toxoplasmosis, and in every one of them it triggers sphingolipidosis. Amazing. That means the gene has been conserved evolutionarily over a billion years. Look into the genome, it's a window, compare species to get the info. Some people tell me that it's sinful, I just want to help my friends though. Patience waiting for some care, peer into the darkness, never run scared. Answers come, but it's some here, some there. There's a sample of a gene they're injecting in a cat, in a mouse, in a fungus, in a worm, in a zebrafish Which creates an amazing array of squeamishness It's funny how we feel increasing degrees of empathy The closer we get to our own branch on the family tree And I agree, use cats sparingly, try to prioritize experiments on yeast Besides, mammal generation times are too slow You get more data from flies and time flies For some people the clock is ticking inside their neurons Cholesterol is sticking, but some some cells are dying, or well, some are unaffected And the answers why are coming from comparative genetics When cholesterol is stuck, it doesn't get to where it's needed This knowledge is extremely helpful when designing treatments Kinda like the knowledge that Ebola virus binds to the same protein that NPC provides And Neiman Pick cells are immune to the virus This research could even help us beat Alzheimer's and Parkinson's Cause they have similar causes, lysosome storage and lipid transfer processes So there's a twist in Neiman Pick C disease Research on it is a gift to the species Look into the genome, it's a window Compare species to get the info Some people tell me that it's sinful I just wanna help my friends though Patience waiting for some care Peer into the darkness, never run scared Answers come, but it's some here, some there